Hello everyone, I am Arjun and welcome to my channel. Today I am going to discuss Joseph Conrad's celebrated short story, The Lego. Joseph Conrad was born on 3rd December 1857 in the Russian occupied city of Badikzo, Ukraine. He was the only child born to Evelina Bobrovska and Apollo Korzinovsky. Patriot, writer, and translator of such authors' works as Victor Hugo's and William Shakespeare's. Joseph would also read their works as well as those of Charles Dickens, among many others. The childhood of Joseph Conrad was not a happy one, as in 1861, Joseph's nationalist father, who was an outspoken supporter of the serfs and critic of Poland's oppressor, was arrested along with his wife for being involved with the Police National Committee's anti-Russian activities. They and four-year-old Joseph were exiled to the province of Vologda in northern Russia. The living conditions and harsh climate took their toll on Joseph's parents. They both contracted tuberculosis, Evelina dying of it in 1865, Apollo in 1869. Little did Conrad know he was on his way to becoming one of the greatest 20th century novelists known for his mastery of atmosphere and dramatic realism, at times compared to Rudyard Kipling. His celebrated works are An Outcast of the Island, published in 1896, Tales of Unrest, 1898, Lord Jim, 1900. The Lagoon is a heart-rending tragic story with elements of realism, adventure, and romanticism. This story is set in Southeast Asia, on the Malay Peninsula, or in the Malay archipelago on a river following eastward to the ocean on a creek following inland through the dense forest and at a small house on a lagoon the action takes place in the last half of the 19th century after europeans colonized southern asia and after the malay kingdoms of wajo boni and sidendring fought wars over who should succeed as raja of sidendring before going into the text, we must know about the characters portrayed by Joseph Conrad in this short story. So, let us start with the white man. The white man is not identified by name, though later in the story he is referred as Chuan, but his description is enough for us to figure out that he is a foreigner in a far off land. The white man is a sailor, a traveler, who has previously passed through the Malay area. The word Tuan is a respectful identifier that means sir, and the man whose home he is visiting with acquainted with one another long ago. The second important character of this story is Arshad. Arshad is a Malay who lives in a home on a lagoon of a shallow creek and hidden by a dense forest. He is disliked by the crew aboard Tuan's ship but they do as they are told and deliver the man to his friend's house. Arshat is described as a man, young, powerful, with a broad chest and muscular arms. He had nothing on but his sharong. His head was bare. His big, soft eyes stared eagerly at the white man. The next character of this horse story is Arshat's brother. According to me, Arshat's brother is a young man who appears in a flashback story told by Arshat. Arshad says he died while helping Arshad and Daimalan escape from the Raja's men. When we, are go when we will read the story, we will get to know about Arshad's brothers more. And at the same time, we will see or will it, uh, we will witness Arshad's brother's bravery, his valor, and how he sacrificed his life just to help his brother Arshad and Daimalan. Daimalan was once the servant of Raja's wife and then later on Arshad fell in love with Daimalan. He and she eloped and were chased by the Raja's men. Here Arshad fought against the Raja and he also left everything for Daimalan and has chosen to live in a simple small house at Lagoon. The next important character of this horse story is Raja, a ruler in the land of the Malay. He is mentioned in the flashback story. The next character is Inchi Meda, Raja's wife. Daimalan was her servant until the latter eloped with Arshad. 
she is mentioned in the flashback story told by arshad even it is also mentioned that raja was kind in a but raja's wife ichi meda was a cruel lady and it is hard to get rid of from her anger the juragan the juragan is a word used to describe the leader of the chairman here the juragan was with his four helpers in the boat The lagoon is set in colonized Malaysia and follows to an a white man as he visits an old war friend named Arshad a Malaysian warrior and native Arshad greets Tuan with news that Daimalan Arshad's beloved is ill with a fever Tuan enters Arshad's hut nothing that Daimalan has an air of death about her Arshad asks Tuan several times whether or not Daimalan will die. Tuan believes that Daimalan's death is imminent, but he attempts to assure the painful truth with platitudes. The white man tried to console Arshad with platitudes. Arshad becomes moody and reflective while Tuan makes camp outside Arshad's hut. Night falls. Arshad joins Tuan around the campfire. Tuan and Arshad sit silently until the darkness of the jungle night stokes a contemplative mood. Arshad momentarily returns to his hut to check on Daimalan. Tuan stays by the fire, contemplating the jungle darkness. Arshad returns to the fireside. Tuan tunes his ear to the jungle and picks up the faint murmurings of Arshad's voice. Voice. Arshad accounts the most significant event of his life, his abduction of Daimalan and the death of his brother. Tuan listens attentively. Arshad's story begins with Tuan's departure after the war. Shortly after Tuan left Malaysia, Arshad fell in love with Daimalan, a servant belonging to a neighboring raja's wife a raja is an indian leader descendant from the nobility arshad says how he con- uh, how he confided his love for daimalan to his brother he and his brother planned a elopement daimalan ran to the shore where arshad's boat was moored Arshad took Daimalan into the boat and set out for the lagoon. The kidnapping invigorates Arshad's brother's masculine ego. He calls into the night for a challenge, soliciting a confrontation to prove his determination and force of will. Arshad entreats his brother to remain silent, hoping for a smooth gateway, knowing that pursuit is inevitable. Arshad and his brother vigorously paddle through the night. exhausted to the point of collapse arshad call for rest and his brother acquiesces while the brothers rested the raja's men appeared on the horizon arshad's brother directed arshad and daimalan to flee informing them of a nearby canoe that belonged to a fisherman arshad found the canoe overpowered the fisherman and fled with daimalan from the raja's man leaving his brother to be killed by the pursuers as arshad and daimalan paddled their way to safety the death throw uh, the death throes of arshad's brother fill the air arshad finishes his tale hearing a noise from the hut he gets up and checks on daimalan when he emerges he tells to her that she has died The title is in perfect harmony with the themes of betrayal, remorse, and retribution. A lagoon is a saltwater lake that is partly separated from the sea by rocks or sand or coral. The setting of the story is the lagoon. The quiet, serene, and mysterious atmosphere is the perfect setting for the story, depicting poignant tragedy of Arshad's life. Symbolically, it represents the Arshad's present mental state and the 
secluded life of Urshad and Daimuran. Living in the place isolated from the outside world, the dark and gloomy place is perfectly atoned to the most pathetic tragedy of Urshad's life. The themes with which the story deal with are loyalty, love, bravery, and remorse.